welcome to all WISIS stakeholders from all over the world and special greetings from the WISIS Forum 2015. I'm Gitanjali Shah, policy analyst WISIS, working at the International Telecommunications Union. As you all know, this is a very special year as it is the 10-year anniversary review for the WISIS process and also the review of the Millennium Development Goals and the enunciation of the Sustainable Development Goals. After receiving several inputs from WISIS stakeholders on the lack of reflection of ICTs in the Sustainable Development Goals, we, as UN Action Line facilitators, embarked on an exercise to demonstrate a direct linkage of the action lines, the WISIS action lines, and the Sustainable Development Goals. The result of this exercise that was coordinated by the ITU is in the form of an easy to read matrix, which is available to all the stakeholders on the website, www.wisis.org slash SDGs. While referring to the WISIS SDG matrix, the Secretary General of the ITU, Mr. Haolin Zhao said, and I quote, ITU was pleased to coordinate this effort and I hope that the matrix will serve as an easy reference for all stakeholders engaged in shaping the future of both the SDGs and the WISIS process beyond 2015. Each WISIS action line is facilitated by a United Nations agency according to their respective mandates. The matrix maps the WISIS action lines with the SDGs and also provides a rationale for each. We have with us today action line facilitators from UN agencies. I will start with Sophie Trenin. Hello, Sophie. Uh, how do you think uh, action line e-agriculture contributes to the uh, sustainable development goals? As you know, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is the facilitator. And uh, when we're talking about agriculture, it's not only agriculture, but it's also forestry, uh, fishery. And uh, in agriculture, it's not only plants, it's also livestock. So it's quite uh, vast. Um, and um, e-agriculture in the last 10 years has evolved really a lot. Uh, if in the last 10 years we had some difficulties in finding uh, specific projects, nowadays almost all projects have ICTs included in what they are doing. And so now it's uh, more complicated to see which one we are going to choose. So indeed, when you look at agriculture and ICTs, you see that e-agriculture is really related to the SDGs. And... Um, specifically the SDG number two, which is to end hunger, to actually improve uh, food security and uh, nutrition, and also to have uh, sustainable agriculture. This is really clearly the mandate of FAO, and this is how we can actually contribute to the SDGs. It's uh, focusing on this. But there are also, of course, other action lines that we can refer to. Among the 17 sustainable development goals, Action Line e-agriculture fits best with some goals. Which ones are those and why? So indeed, uh, the one that where we fit best is goal number two, which is the one that FAO is actually uh, coordinating. It's end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition, promote sustainable agriculture. Uh, but agriculture is not only agriculture, it's also forestry, fishery, and when we are talking about uh, food security, we are also talking about uh, consumers, but also small older farmers. So this will have also a link to um, what goals link to health, uh, uh, goals that are going to be linked to um, consumers, goals that are going to be uh, linked to water and sanitation, uh, to also uh, partnerships, whether it's a public-private partnership or involving uh, the, the civil society, and uh, also the goal uh, which is related to gender equality, empowerment of women and girls, which is uh, goal number five, because this should be mainstream in whatever any agency is doing. So uh, if you look at the matrix, 
uh, you will see that um, we are in many of the SDGs. So we will have to focus on where we can really make a difference. And this is what we will try to do. Thank you very much, Sophie. Uh, we now move to Action Line Facilitator of uh, C4, Mike Nexley, and he is working at the International Telecommunications Union. Welcome, Mike. Uh, capacity building Action Line C4 is very cross-cutting. It contributes to most of the sustainable development goals. Uh, could you elaborate why? Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. In fact, I would, I would uh, go on to say that it contributes to all uh, of the 17 SDGs. And this is quite, uh, quite normal because uh, capacity building is actually cross-cutting. Everything that we do uh, rests on capacity building. If you look at all the other SDGs, some of them are involved in formulating the right policy frameworks uh, in order to achieve the desired SDG. And for those right policy frameworks uh, to be put in place, you need people to be equipped with the knowledge and the skills with which to do that. And if you look at uh, ICT applications, for example, for people to be able to leverage uh, the benefits of those ICT applications, they need to know how to use those ICT tools. So really, throughout the entire spectrum from infrastructure to regulation to use of ICTs, capacity building runs through as a thread. Thank you. Among, uh, can you highlight one or two specific goals where Action, Action Line C4 has a specific and particular role to play? Um, like I said at the beginning, all the 17 SDGs, uh, capacity building has a role to play. But if I were to pick out uh, 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 two, as you say, I would probably go for um, goal four, uh, which is ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities. As you know, since ICTs came on, on board, people don't have to go to a classroom to learn. Right? People can actually learn on their mobiles, people can learn on their tablets, people can learn in various ways. They can even have uh, information put on a USB stick. So all these IC tools that are bringing education away from the brick and mortar uh, building uh, onto, their, onto their laptops. So I think that has actually had far-reaching consequences to people. For example, those who did not have banking services now can actually have banking services right on their, on their laptops. So that's one DG, SDG I think is greatly impacted upon. The other one I would put it as a, um, as a goal 16, which is promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build uh, effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. You know about M government, you know about E government, you know about uh, M commerce. In other words, all these benefits are reaching almost everybody who was unable to have them. So the challenge right now is actually to extend the range uh, to, in, to have more people included in these ICT uh, uh, services that are becoming available. Thank you, Mike, the Action Line Facilitator of C4 uh, ITU. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, hello, Sophie. Uh, Sophie Maddens is the Action Line Facilitator for C6, uh, which is uh, enabling environment. And ITU is the sole facilitator for this Action Line. Welcome, Sophie. Uh, my first question to you would be, an enabling environment is absolutely crucial for the implementation of VISIS action lines to promote digital inclusion and socio-economic empowerment. How can action line C6 contribute to the implementation of the sustainable development goals? Thank you, Gitanjali, and good morning to you. Yes, indeed, we are the facilitator for Action Line C6, the enabling environment. The enabling environment is really that the framework that creates the trust, the framework that will allow the further transformation of our world. Today, ICTs affect our world. They affect everything we do. They affect how we can live, how we can carry out agriculture, have e-health, have e-government. Uh, a strong, resilient, strong internet uh, and strong, resilient, strong communications infrastructure allows us to address all these SDGs. And like Mike, I want to go through some of the SDGs. ICTs can help poverty. They can help uh, help relieve poverty. They can help get better health services. They can help get a, 
uh, better quality education, promote economic uh, development, make citizens safe. But for that, for that resilient, reliable infrastructure and for the use of the services, it's important to have the trust in those services. To get the next billion online, we have to create and keep that trust. And that's where the enabling environment comes in. We can't kill the golden goose. We have to create that environment that promotes innovation, that promotes investment, that promotes trust, that allows affordable, accessible, available communications. We have to think of the marginalized people and for that enabling environment, policies and regulations that think about the marginalized people, the youth, the women, uh, people with specific needs, we need to incorporate that in our regulatory and policy environments as well. So policymakers and regulators, when crafting an enabling environment and looking at that environment on how to promote agriculture and get the affordable, accessible ICTs so that agriculture can benefit from them, need to think of that. And one last thing that I think is very key to this as well is have a holistic approach. Don't just think about how can I get computers to schools. Don't just think about how can I get communications infrastructures to the rural areas, but also think how can I work with my Ministry of Agriculture, work with my Ministry of Education so that the communities know how to leverage the use of these ICTs. And I look at my colleague Mike as well have capacity building, inform, educate, so that the, that the that golden opportunity of ICTs can be used across all the SDGs. How can the SDGs leverage from the transformational power of ICTs and broadband, and what role does Action Line C6 play there? Okay, so I'll make it a little bit personal here. I am who I am and I do what I do because of the transformational power of ICTs. I'm a mother, I'm a professional, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an, a consumer. So ICTs have made that available for me. Having grown up in an age where ICTs were not available all over the world, we've seen what a transformational role it has played. We've seen how it's changed the world. We've seen that by having strong, broadband infrastructure, children in school that before would struggle fight over one book for the whole school, the whole village, now with a simple Kindle can have access to the Dickens and the Molières and all the literature of the world. Agricultural um, people in the agricultural communities can have access to prices, the latest prices where the need is for their goods and services, maternal health. Us as mothers, we know that it's very important to know about the information about the health of your baby, about what you can do to maintain the health of your baby. There are many mothers out there that don't have access to that, to that information today, and that's where the transformational power of ICTs come in. Also the future. There are many out there in the, un, in the unconnected, the billions of unconnected. That can change our world. We have to create that enabling environment so that they can have the opportunity to create the, the future, to be the next Zuckerbergs. And they're out there in places that today we don't know. And they, they can create differences to our life that have economic and social impact on the world we live in today. So, Thank you very much indeed, Sophie. Uh, hello, Calori Carolina. How do ICTs impact your everyday life? Thank you, Jitanjali, and good morning. Well, I mean, uh, uh, it's quite evident how ICTs are changing everyday life, most of all of young people. And we are always with our, with our cell phone, and everywhere in the world is becoming huge. But most of all, if I must say, uh, one big change that is happening and that young people are experiencing and they will experience more even in the future is that they are completely changing the the conception of space and time so uh, it's it's really creating one only big community and I, I mean i can talk and work in new york easily from my laptop and this is very important, most of all for the youth in the developing countries if you think about it and to give an example uh, the, the easiest example I can think of is uh, youth unemployment. We talk about it a lot, we hear about it a lot, and I believe ICTs can really contribute to that because now it's, it's much easier to look for jobs and even to work from everywhere and everywhere. And this is very uh, enabling to, to young people looking for jobs. And as I said, we are not an, I'm not anymore an Italian girl looking for a job. I, 
part of this world, I can look for jobs everywhere in the world. And I believe ICTs are enabling me to do that. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you. Hello, Jengi. As a young uh, woman, uh, how do you feel ICTs empower you in your everyday life? Okay, hello Gitanjali. Uh, I think ICTs are really like important these days, uh, not only for our pro professional life, but also for our daily life. Uh, for professional life, for example, colleagues can exchange documents and ideas using some sort of platform. And this is really environmental friendly, which is, I think, matches with the SDG of the United Nations. And for like everyday life, I think young people in our, day, our days are uh, indispensable for the like cell phones because we communicate with our friends using the social medias. Uh, we cannot live without these uh, ICTs and ICTs really make life easier. It shortens the distance between people. Uh, for example, uh, I know many of us, like we go abroad to study and it's really important to use ICTs to communicate with your parents. It's like if we were like never, uh, never been away from each other. So ICTs really help our daily life. And um, um, sorry, I forgot what I should say. Um, well, that okay. was uh, that was really useful. Yes, of course, ICTs have become indispensable for us today. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you for uh, being a part of this discussion. And we will continue with the other action line facilitators in the round two. Thank you very much.